Um, it's really wild how much of a different ayahuasca experience and a, a much more effective instrument for her to use that I can be when I have at least five days, uh, three minimum, but five days or more of just a lot of juice fasting, like six to eight juices a day. Hey guys, welcome to our Soul Fan podcast, where I interview space holders from all over the world. I'm your host, my name is Carolina, and I'm the Manifestation Mentor and Connection Catalyst. Today on the show, we have David Stop, the founder of Magical Healing Center. Welcome to the show, David. How are you doing? Thank you. Doing fantastic. I super appreciate the opportunity. We have some amazing things going on this year, and yeah, I just really appreciate the opportunity. Love your energy and happy to be here. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to talk to you too, because we're going to touch upon really exciting topics like ayahuasca, for example. And I would love to jump straight in and dive into this very deep question that I have and that I'm the most curious about, really. Um, and it's about your biggest takeaways from Mother Ayahuasca, maybe like top one to three, because I know that everyone gets something out of it and everyone gets something else out of it. So I'm curious if you could share with us, what are your biggest takeaways? Yeah, absolutely. So and just to kind of preface it, I've sat over 200 times now, which is really rare. It became my wife and I's calling. It's our Dharma. So we've done extensive training with our teachers in Colombia, in the Amazon jungle. Every year we go over and train with them constantly, stay connected, train with their teachers. So uh, I've said a multitude of times, to stay on my craft, my game, and I've been initiated to actually serve. So I serve the medicine here in Texas at the plant medicine church that my wife and I run, and my teacher serves it at our international retreats, and I help him and his wife. So I've said a multitude of times. So out of all the times I've said, every single experience has been completely different. Uh, but if I had to summarize some takeaways, one, the absolute, what I consider to be essential to remain an eternal student. Because no matter what you do, as, as much as you learn your craft, as good as you get at it, there's this beautiful, mysterious intelligence that's always guiding and always evolving. So staying an eternal student, because one of the key things with ayahuasca, as many things as happens with it, it deepens your awareness. Every single cup I've ever drank deepened my awareness even deeper, deepened my awareness deeper to where I can see things uh, that I didn't wasn't able to see before. So Deepening the awareness was a big piece of that, staying an eternal student no matter what. Um, and also another really big takeaway is the reality that that everything can be healed. Nothing is an incurable thing. Nothing is a life sentence. You know, there's so many conditions and programs and all this stuff out there that condition people into thinking they're stuck with something forever. And I've been really blessed to see some of the most divine healing. One of my teachers uh, had a really bad case of bone cancer. And one of my other teachers literally helped him heal his bone cancer with ayahuasca. I've seen everyone, uh, that's just one. And then he dedicated his life to ayahuasca. And now he's a shaman over in Colombia. I've just seen so many miraculous healings from this sacred medicine, this ancient intelligence that everything can heal. Like don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Um, staying an eternal student Um and just understanding, you know, we get people from all walks of life, All we, we accept all beliefs. So no matter what you believe, it's all good. But uh, the, the reality, at least in my experience of this other higher power, you can call it the great mystery or whatever you want to call it, that's, that really loves us and is doing the best, always working out for us, uh, you know. So it's really a deeper realization and comfort in knowing there is this higher power, whatever you want to call it. Um, staying an eternal student, no matter how much you sharpen up or become efficient at your craft, and then understanding that everyone can heal. every Everything can heal. Nothing is incurable. Those would be some of the main ones. Wow, I love them. Absolutely. And I agree with that as well, because how I started my spiritual development was that the, I met this one person and he was like, oh yeah, I cured myself from kind of like multiple sclerosis, kind of like this, where he had um, 12 breaks, I think, in his spine between the nerves. So he literally could not walk. And I was like, come on, man, like that's not, like, you don't really heal. And it was like eight <laughs> years ago, right? And I was just like questioning it, but I was still curious. I was still open. And then the next time we met, he was like, hey, you know, there's this whole like spirituality and you can heal yourself. And and there are psychedelics that help with it. And, and I was like, oh man, I actually brought like one single mushroom that I got from a friend. And he's like, <laughs> okay, I can show you how it works. I'm like, okay, let's do it. And so that's how I started my evolution. And it, it started from curiosity, like, 
how can someone heal, right? How can someone even bring their body into balance? But what he said to me, and I truly believe that it's true, that he, he was loving himself for a month. He could not mm -hmm. get up, but then through self-love, because he had some kind of shaman come to me, him, he said like, yes, yeah, some shaman came with some like uh, necklace made of some stones, just like shook, the are all shook this. And then I was feeling great for like the next two weeks. So I was like, what the hell just happened, <laughs> right? <laughs> the little shaman just sang, sang some songs, just, you know, did some shamanic stuff and I felt better. So then he started digging and then he just loved himself and loved Love truly transformed his whole energy field into more healed state because that's more of our natural state and natural flow, right? So I also truly believe that you can heal all. I mean, I feel like saying healing all maybe is a little bit of an overstatement because I feel like if you have some karmic um, connection or like karmic, I don't know, lessons to, to receive, yeah. you might not be able to do that. But the thing is that it's not because like you can't it's because you're bound with some contracts right on an energy level so but yeah i've i've seen so many people heal themselves and i myself healed myself too of uh, of the parasites and viruses in my digestive system i could not even walk i was so so much in pain mm. but i did it all through emotional release through mm. some supplementations with some herbs and only only plant medicine really like in terms of like you know some supplementation and maybe some fasting and some juicing and an emotional release on a almost daily basis and after a year, I was completely healed um, of what happened. So I totally resonate with what you said. And th thank you so much for mentioning that at the, at the beginning of our podcast, because I feel like we need to install hope in people's mm. minds rather than sentences for life, right? Yeah, and right. we are here to just tell them, hey, guys, how about you try plant medicine? How about you try, you know, to heal yourself? How about you try emotional release? And then you can yeah. feel way better, right? <laughs> absolutely yeah yeah and that's the thing there's uh so many programs and conditions and systems out there that try and condition people one way when there's and everyone is their own library everyone's their own universe who knows what's going to work for people but we can at least say hey this worked for us and this worked for these people so if it calls to you in your heart give it a shot see if it works there's there are ways there's so many ways but yeah just talking about ways that have really been beautiful and divine and that people can heal and i love what you said about the karmic stuff too because i found there's you know the physical stuff that happens the emotional the traumas there definitely is some generational ancestral stuff and karmic things too which is like a whole nother level of it but from the physical aspect yeah just the, the healing truly is divine mm. and also i feel like links one links to the other because if you are open always as a student to new possibilities then you can also like explore more of alternative healing you can go try acupuncture and you know go to different healers but if you just stay closed in your box you're never going to really experience all the other options for you so i think it's like very beautifully interlinked lessons um so thank you so much for sharing all that it's it's really really amazing and so i would love to come back a little bit and rewind to how you started being uh, you know, as ayahuasca shaman, because now you say you practice so many times and it's your dharma. And so I'm guessing that mm, Mother Ayahuasca just chose you. She's like, yep, you, you're going to serve me for the rest of your life or for at least like X years, right? Because it's usually like the medicine just, just chooses you. That's how I feel with mushrooms um, and with MDMA that I do these kind of therapies with people. I feel like I just resonate with this medicine so much that it just chose me. And I, I felt like, okay, I'm called to spread it um, as much as I can in the countries that it's legal, in the way that it's like, you know, uh, legit. But I'm curious about your journey. How did you start? How how did you feel the calling? And um, yeah, like, how did it all happen for you? Yeah, you know, it's wild. Uh, the very first time I ever sat with ayahuasca, like seven years ago, um initially it all happened because of my wife and this whole movement really is it my wife's a huge part of that um she has multiple appointments today so it didn't work out to be on it uh this time but it's really her she suffered a really quick recap uh she suffered severe levels of sexual physical emotional abuse from like seven years old to mid-20s and by the time she was in her mid-30s it developed into seven different diagnosed autoimmune diseases and like severe ptsd insomnia is wild we tried everything in the world until we were divinely guided to ayahuasca. And really long story short, she was able to heal all seven autoimmune diseases, all her PTSD, her insomnia, everything. 
through um, utilizing ayahuasca as well as psilocybin mushrooms. My wife works with mushrooms as well. She's a really psilocybin close in her heart, um, but that didn't come out until the ayahuasca healing either. But ayahuasca, but, and that's what really um, started the ayahuasca path. The first time I ever experienced ayahuasca with her, it called me the very first time I sat with it. I remember at the end of the ceremony saying, Megan, I think I'm supposed to work with this. But at that time, I had so much imposter syndrome, so much self-doubt. Like, I was like, I'm like a white kid from Oklahoma. There's no way I'm supposed to work. <laughs> like, what a weird thought. Why would that thought come up in ceremony? Like, that's got to be ego or something. So I let it go. I let it go for a few years. I was just like, that, oh, that, that was, and I didn't experience ayahuasca for a few years until I met my teachers. So I met my teachers, Master Shaman, Danilo Jimenez, Mary Rodriguez, Taita Andreas, and Diana, these amazing, incredibly powerful, but really loving shamans. Um, I'm Taita, or uh, Master Shaman Danilo Jimenez is very well known in the Amazon. He's been working with the medicine over 20 years, incredible being. And I were, and we sat in ceremony with him. And at the end, I was talking with him and his wife and Danilo was like, no, you're, you've worked with this medicine before in other lives. Like you're supposed to work with this medicine. He told me that which gave me the confirmation to like be able to believe in myself that I was supposed to. Uh, so because of what he said in my teachers, and then they, he took me under his wing and started training almost every month and in the Amazon and in Colombia and in Mexico and just traveling around training with him after that. So I knew years ago when I first said that it was my calling, but I, I was, I didn't have the confidence yet. And I didn't have the uh, belief in myself yet until I met my teacher who like, let me borrow that belief until I could believe it in myself. Um, and, and yeah, that's what really started it. And then after many, many ceremonies, many different trainings, and then a couple of really difficult initiations in the Amazon, um, I was able to come back and we founded a plant medicine church called Church of Sacred Union. And we work with it in Texas. So we do ayahuasca retreats in Texas and all over the world too with our teachers. But it did call me right in the beginning. It did. I just wasn't quite ready when it first called me until I had my amazing teacher affirmed that for me. Wow. And that's crazy how sometimes we need to kind of attune to the energy that is already there, but we need to kind of grow as a person to then be a vibrational match to the reality that we already kind of like suspected is going to be there, but then we just were in denial or, you know, we're suppressing mm -hmm. this information or whatever. I had this happen um, in my life as well. When on uh, our, I think it was MDMA journey, when I was with my ex-partner after like half a year of relationship, I asked like my soul, is this my partner for life? But it said no. But then I was like, ah, yeah, I'm just going to deny it and suppress it. And maybe it's just my mind or whatever. And right. then fast forward three years afterwards, he gets a channeled message from God that we're not supposed to be together. And we were like, and I was like, yeah, I kind of knew it, but I just uh, dismissed it for the last three years. And because we had such a great relationship, the best relationship ever, both of us, we were like, we didn't, we never want to break up, but it was a yeah. higher power telling us that we should. And we just like, okay, we trust it, right? But it's just crazy yeah. how sometimes we just like dismiss information and then it, it comes back and then they're like, okay, now I don't have a choice. I have to just like <laughs> go with it, right? So it's, it's just pretty That's interesting. Right. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, it'll come through. Too. It'll come through. It's like listening to that voice, um, but you have to like not let the uh, the doubt. The doubt comes in, right? And that's like this big transition that's happening all over the world right now for people that are choosing to really go deep inside themselves and do this inner work. Uh, you really become a really beautiful, clear channel for these messages to come through, which mm -hmm. is really nice. Exactly. And I'm curious to know more about your first ayahuasca journey, just because literally like a month ago, I had my first ayahuasca journey. I've been working with other medicines before, but this was my first aya. And so I'm curious to know if you are happy to share uh, or whatever you're happy to share about the first, very first experience, apart from this download that you got that you are supposed to work with it. Yeah, my first one, this was really early on in my wife's healing journey, and I didn't understand so much of what was happening. I speak a lot on the masculine, feminine, energetic dynamic and understanding how that sacred union and how it like works together to heal and triggers each other and brings all stuff, all this kind of stuff. Um, but I didn't understand anything like that early on at all. So when I first went into my first ayahuasca experience, I had a lot of like... Um, questions and I didn't understand things and a little anger too, because I didn't understand why my wife had to suffer so much. All I saw was like the result, like all the trauma, then like all the results of the trauma and the suffering. And it was like, 
really difficult in those first few years because she was going through a healing process and it was like really difficult. So my first ayahuasca experience going in, I went in with, I didn't realize, I didn't realize I had it, but a little resentment for like all this stuff that mm. she had to go through. It didn't make sense, like why she had to go through that. So my first experience, I got like, shot up to like, I saw the colors and everything. I saw this like being come in and I don't know if the being was ayahuasca, but it was just like all these different colors and shapes that made a being. And I remember saying, why does this have to happen? Why does she have to like suffer these things? Why is like, why, 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 you know, is, does she have to feel so much pain and, you know, not have this insomnia and all these things. And it said, it said that only, uh, I want to get the word right. Uh, but it was a really sacred message. It was only when you know the depths of great pain can you truly understand the depths of great pleasure. Only when you are truly like hit the extremity of your sadness and depression can you experience true happiness and joy. So it's all part of like this divine plan um, that that was taking place. It like really, and it was other words, but it, that was the basic message of this download was like, because of that, she's going to be able to serve a beautiful purpose and because and she'll be able to really appreciate and have gratitude for the joy and the happiness and the peace and all of that because for all the years of not being in that. Um, that was really my first one. And then, um, <laughs> uh, not to speak too much on her experience, but it was really funny. We sat two nights. The first night, Megan had nothing happen at all, and she was pissed. Like, she came all this way to see have these amazing... <laughs> happened she almost left the retreat um but she didn't <laughs> she was really happy nothing happened because the second night whoo she got put through it massive releases like the most difficult physical thing she ever been through in her life but she needed it she needed like a really difficult entity that was removed she needed all these like energies processed so she needed it so it ended up being a really bad and that second night I took a massive dose and I didn't feel a thing because my my purpose was really just to hold space for what she was going through. And that's the beauty. It's such a cool people. I get questions all the time. It's like, is it like this? Is it like that? It's like, it's an intelligence. It's this ancient intelligence that ever, that's why it's impossible to have an expectation. Like this intelligence knows what you need, whether it's rest, whether it's this, whether it's purge, like whatever it is, it knows what you need. Um, mm -hmm. So my second night was really calm while she went through her process. Mm. Yeah, and it's interesting because even if you do have expectations, you, you might be almost sure that it's going to be the complete opposite <laughs> of what you expect, right? Because it's like, no, it's like you get what you need and not what you want, right? From That's these right. experiences. That's, it's with mushrooms, it's with ayahuasca, it's like with every medicine I feel at least as like, um, you know, I'm my own shaman kind of thing. Um, and yeah. I feel like it's the medicine that takes you and shaman is really there to just like hold the space for whatever is taking place, but not really to, to guide. Maybe with other medicines like MDMA, I'm there more able to like guide it and like, you know, set the flow. But with mushrooms and Aya, I'm just like, okay, I'm just hands off. I'm just a container, right? For the people to go through whatever they need to go through. And it's interesting what you say about people like having very various experiences because for me my first ayahuasca was super mild like people you know sometimes expect like a big thing but also i was traveling from like nosara to puerto viejo and it's funny because uh, how it happened is like my friend was like hey i see you with me in puerto viejo we're doing ayahuasca together and my Girl, look, I'm in the oh. place in my life, like, I don't want anything like that. I've gone through so much shadow work and I'm on my period and I feel so shit. I'm not going, I'm not going to the other side of Costa Rica to do ayahuasca right now. Like, no, it's not happening. She's like, look, let's, let's talk after your period. Okay. Like I see you in my visions. Let's talk then. And of course the next day I was like, hmm, ayahuasca. <laughs> and then I felt, I, I sat in the meditation. I'm like, okay, I think I, I'm supposed to do this. I feel like I, I'm supposed to do this. I don't, I might not want to really do this, but okay, I'm supposed <laughs> to do it. And then I spent, literally, I kid you not, I spent 13 and a half hours traveling from one side of, of Costa Rica, mm -hmm. from Nosara to Puerto Viejo. But I was like, okay, Mama Aya is calling me. And also it was a funny situation. I really want to share this because this is how the universe works, right? And how ayahuasca works. Because I was like, look, I was telling this friend, look, I just paid so much for this apartment here in Nosara. It's one of the most expensive places in the world. And I found this kind of good deal, but it's still a lot of money. And you just tell me to just drop it for a week, you know, to go to Puerto Viejo. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, Mama Aya, look, Here's the deal. If you want me to be there, I need you to find someone like a tenant to, to rent it out for me, right? 
And yeah. then I was like, I, I just let it go. Like, if it's still supposed to happen, it's going to magically just somehow happen. Yeah. And then it's so crazy because then my friend is calling me, hey, I think I found a tenant for, for your place. And then this guy calls me, uh, Amjad, his name is Amjad. And Amjad is like, hey, look, so I think I'm interested in your place. And I asked my friend who I was doing, I was like, okay, so what time are you there? She's like, yeah, from 9th to 16th. I'm like, okay, let's see if I can find someone until the 16th. And Amjad calls me like, hey, so I need the place until the 16th. And, oh, I'm, actually, yeah. and I'm actually already staying in this apartment. So I just oh, want to make my, play, my stay longer. And I'm like what like it's That's hilarious it's hilarious it's so divinely guided that i was like okay wow. mama I, uh, I get it okay. i'm supposed to be there i'm supposed to yeah. go no matter if it takes like a long time and so it was just so guided it was just so crazy um, that, and that until the 16th the exact day that uh, my friend had an apartment there right so i was like okay i'm going and i went but i was so exhausted after my trip because it took me like a long time i i traveled the day earlier but i still didn't get like enough rest enough sleep and literally we were there at, on the ceremony at like four but we were only served at eight and i almost like fell asleep before even being served and I was just so exhausted and I personally felt this feeling and I'm curious about your perspective on it, on it that I didn't feel much I didn't even puke once the only thing that happened was like I felt some tension in my body and then I yawned it out and then I felt another tension and I yawned it out and mama I wanted kind of to take me a little bit out of my body but I'm like look I, I have no power to just travel in the dimensions right now I literally like I literally can't like you know I just I, and then it was like okay so I just you want some stuff out, I felt a little uncomfortable, and then I was just there, just pretty much chilling while other people were going through their crazy stuff. I was just at peace. And I even asked, like, should I take another cup? It's like, no, you just get what you need now. And I felt some perspectives shift. I can't, like, put my finger on it or, like, what has changed, but I became a little more peaceful, a little more grounded, a little more centered within myself, which is what I really needed. But it wasn't like a crazy experience. I didn't, you know, exp I didn't even experience like a very strong presence, just like a mild presence, mild experience. And I feel like it's because I, I had what I could handle in a way, you know, like my body was not even able to puke. I was so exhausted that I was not even able to like let it go in other ways, but I still yawned things out. Like I could yawn for like 10 minutes straight, you know what I mean? Which is quite funny, but that's just oh, yeah. how it was for me. So I'm curious about like your perspective on like why it might be like this for me, like, because the, is it that the intelligence feels like, okay, her body is just so exhausted. Like we can't go deeper right now, or this is exactly what she needs kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, obviously I don't know uh, your story. I, I can, I can sense that you've done a lot of uh, shadow work. You're, you're quite conscious. So um, there's a multitude of factors, you know, and obviously it's just my personal opinion, who knows. Um, but yawning is one way that she absolutely transmutes energy. So it, a lot depends on the amount of energy and electrical system that's going on in the body uh for instance not to not to jump around but what i always advise what i've seen really really effectively work like before i serve i do like an entire week of a juice fast because when the more juice is in my system i'm like electrified and it works more really efficiently um you were probably really exhausted and she used the most efficient way to transmute whatever energy had to leave which is yawning we only see like five percent of what's around us there's so much more that's outside of our vision so yawning is absolutely a way that she uses to leave, have things leave the body also um if you didn't purge it that means the medicine integrated into your system which is a really good thing um that's what i've noticed like a lot of people purge because there's like traumas or energies or things whatever you want to call them that need to leave the body you likely have a very clean vessel um so it was more so just the medicine integrating with your system probably things that whether it's thought processes or little energetic knots or whatever that were leaving through the yawning was a part of it and then just giving you a little bit more of a, a rest because that's probably what your body needed you um really really you're really in tune with everything so uh she tends to you know, go deep with people depending on what they really need. Like, what is it they need? And it's not like you needed this massive purge, super deep experience uh, because I think, uh, because uh, a testament to all the work that you've done and been doing. Um, so it's, you got some stuff out that you needed to get out by yawning and then it integrated. So they also say ayahuasca works with you for 90 days after in different ways. So yeah, that's, that's mm -hmm. my opinion.
Yeah, that's what I felt like. It kind of wanted to stay with me, you know. Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. want to didn't want to go out, but it also gave me like the milder experience for the start. Also, maybe because I was like, I've had like a buffo experiences that were crazy, and I was kind of like, okay, I need to take a break. My break was like two years because I was like, I just don't want to be like pure consciousness of like shapes and colors, just like of infinite space. Like I, I'm okay with my human <laughs> body and just being here, you know. And I'm just like done with something crazy for a while, and I was. I had a little bit of like the fear of going into all these other dimensions, right? So I feel like it was also like an entrance for me of like, hey, it can actually be safe, it can actually be okay, and just like a a little bit of a taster. But I've actually heard from a few people that they also had experiences where the first experience was mild, so that's kind of like a light entrance, and then the second and third experience or the further experiences were deeper and more purging and more um, intense. So maybe it was also the case for me. I don't know. I will see how how it goes with the next one. Um, but for me, I got what I needed. Um, that's how yeah, I feel. <laughs> yeah, we, we always do two. At our international, we do four to five. But at our local, we always do two. And it's always different. I mean, some people, the first one's really intense. But a lot of times, because there's so much expectation and anxiety and maybe a little fear from people that come in, she often will be a little more gentle just to be like, here, relax. So then the, in the subconscious mind and the unconscious mind, the next experience, there's more flow, there's more relax, and she can do whatever she needs to do because of all that like anticipation that's energetic in our body. Mm, beautiful. And actually, I just want to quote uh, my friend because one of my friends before my experience was telling me like, I was like, yeah, I'm a little scared. I don't know. Like I, I kind of know what these medicines work. They can take, you know, I've done big dosages of mushrooms and it's kind of sometimes quite similar, right? I'm like a little scared. And then a friend told me, yeah, you know, my friend had this ayahuasca experience where he was so scared. And then ayahuasca came to him and told me, why are you afraid of your own mother? And then he completely like uh, chilled. Uh, oh. And it's just so beautiful. Wow. I felt like sharing because it's like, That's wow, amazing. if you look at it that way, it could be beautiful, That's right? Yeah, I love it. It's a beautiful perspective to hold if anyone is scared. <laughs> 100%. And, you know, I always tell people, and uh, it's true, out of all the ceremonies I've been, I've been blessed to serve or I've been a part of, every single time with thousands of people over the years, every single person got exactly what they needed for the next step or next chapter in their life. Every single person. It, it'll look different every single time, but it's always what this person needed for the next step. Mm, beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's really um, amazing perspective. And so I'm curious about the preparation because you said that you like to do juice fast and, you know, some people prepare for like the whole month and some people, I got instructions to prepare for like three to five days. But I personally, if I do, for example, mushroom ceremony with someone, I'm like, okay, please avoid alcohol, meat, um, excess sugar, excess salt and uh, go vegan ideally, or, you know, do some juice fasting before the ceremony, at least a week before, because I feel like the more you detoxify your body, the more clean you are to also receive the information it's like you're more sensitive to the medicine you're more sensitive to all these energies so i feel like you also don't need as much of the medicine if you're cleaner and that's better for your body because like you know it can, it can be better integrated and so on and you can just be more um grounded and and with it in a way and that's how i feel with with mushrooms specifically so i'm curious to know because i've done so many of them like what in your experience has been the best preparation for the body vessel to enter the experience with the most effectiveness and in and purity i guess yeah that's a great uh, question because i always start out with tradition just because our lineage is uh, with the colombian uh, shamans and uh, their inca their lineage is the inca so we initially get the dieta and use the dieta of that uh, that's our goat <laughs> um that that's usually what we utilize there's, is that it's a two-week dieta but we have actually in our direct experience found things that we've added to the dieta that we find to be really effective the basic dieta that's traditional that we give everyone is basically a vegan diet, no refined sugars, no alcohol, no mind altering substances for two weeks. One week minimum, two weeks is the best, but one week minimum. Um, also abstaining from um, sexual release. It's like the spiritual energy that really builds up that ayahuasca works with. Sexual energy is spiritual energy. So abstaining and really kind of building that up for the two weeks. Um, and be really conscious of what you watch, what you listen to. Don't listen or watch any fear-based things. I always advise people to make like 15 to 20 minutes just for themselves each day. I'm a really big advocate of stillness 
So I write up a little thing of stillness they can do with themselves to, you know, calm their mind. But most of it's just eating really clean, no oils, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, and I, and that's what the traditional one is. What we've personally added to it in our direct experience that has made a massive difference is as much organic fruit and juicing as possible. Um, it's really wild how much of a different ayahuasca experience and a, a much more effective instrument for her to use that I can be when I have at least five days, uh, three minimum, but five days or more of just a lot of juice fasting, like six to eight juices a day, 16 ounces, all fruit. I do all fruit personally, um, and we juice it ourselves. Um, but juice fasting, I always advise people, look, you're your own library. You know what works best for you 100%. But at least for me, what I've seen time and time again is the more alkaline and electric your body can be, the more effective she can work with your vessel. Uh, so as much juicing uh, as possible. And then I also really um, am intentional about advising people to take time to make, to be still, uh, practice stillness in the mornings as the days uh, get closer. Because so much... The thoughts are really easy to get caught up in the ceremony. If you can practice stilling the mind, a lot of the power of the ceremony is in that present moment and not trying to explain things, not wondering what's happening, just allowing her to do whatever she needs to do. Mm, amazing. And that's what I resonate with so much because like I um, experienced myself the let's say the clarity and the purity of my body when I was fasting, it was like the, I did three weeks fast twice. And then I did some juicing here and there as well. And I wow. felt like when I don't eat it's just, and I only drink water or even only juice or sometimes coconut water or whatever, the, the body just becomes so open energetically. Like the channels of energy are just unclogged in a way. That's how it feels in my body. And so then the medicine can also flow more freely inside of you if the, yeah. if the body is more detoxified and if the liver is pure. And if um, I also like, like doing enemas with green coffee or just, you know, uh, Himalayan salt and lemon. And that's what I did also before this ayahuasca, like two or three enemas before so that my intestines are cleansed. And also what I've heard from one of my friends who is a shaman. And um, I don't know what is the name of this uh, in, in, uh, in India, in, in India or Sanskrit or whatever, but when you drink salt water and it just cleanses your like whole system, that's what it's called. Pra, pra, how is it called? I forgot. Uh, pranka shak, shak, something. <laughs> anyway, it's about like, it's an, it's a, um, I think, yeah, I will, maybe I'll look it up and, and talk about it on, on a different podcast. But pretty much what happens is like you, uh, take the Himalayan salt or other type of salt and you dilute, dilute it in water and you drink this salt with water and you do um, exercises to pretty much just cleanse your intestines. You have, uh, I think, five different or a few different exercises that you repeat and it's like you're doing it as a cycle. Um, and then it cleanses out your whole body, like, of course, your whole digestive system, because the salt is also the energy cleanse, right? So you pretty much take all the negative energy out and you like, until you pretty much you know, um, release only the water from your uh, body, wow. right? So you pretty much cleanse the whole digestive system. And so she recommended to uh, to do it the day before. And I, I didn't have a chance to do it, but I, I did the enema instead. But I feel like the more your digestion is also clean, the more you can absorb of the medicine and and, and the more healing you can you can get. So yeah, I forgot the, how, how it's the name because it's like a complicated name for me as a Polish person. Um, but if you look up like, you know, um, maybe ayahuasca preparation, like, drinking salt or whatever or just the indian indian salt cleanse or whatever um yeah, then yeah, people can probably uh, probably find it and i feel like yeah just cleansing your digestive system in any way you can really before taking any of these medicines whether it's ayahuasca or uh, mushrooms can massively massively help um mm -hmm. absolutely couldn't agree more yeah absolutely and so i also have a question to you about um the group versus the individual approach to this, because I personally like would feel better. And that's what I felt also on my first ceremony that if I have to go completely crazy, like have a massive release or whatever, I'd rather be with like only one or two or maximum three more people in the space where I feel like I have a lot of space. And here we were just like in the jungle, mattress next to mattress. And I feel like, I don't know if I do my hand like this, if I'm gonna hit <laughs> someone next to me or if the dog will crawl on me or whatever, because there were like three dogs in the space. And I personally felt like that was also one of the, 
um, factors that made me feel like, oh, I can't maybe fully go as deep as I would as I would if I did it like let's say one on one with the shaman or maybe with one of my friends and because that's how my besties did it like them as a couple and then the shaman and her partner doing music and so I feel like in this certain settings I could personally uh, probably go deeper so I'm curious about your perspective whether it is about the certain settings or it's not as relevant from your perspective or you know private versus like group settings how do you feel about it all? Yeah, uh, so in my experience, when people need to go crazy, they'll go crazy. We've had some, uh, we've had some intense ones in the group settings. Some, some wild things have happened. No matter what, it always ends well. Uh, but when it's time that someone needs to release something, it's coming out. Uh, the grandmother definitely makes sure that happens. Uh, it's, it's really interesting because I, I feel like in sometimes the, the, the human can have that control, but I think overall, when something needs to happen, you're, you're on, you're in for the ride. Like the grandmother's the one in charge and it's, it's going to happen. And sometimes it's out of your control. In my personal opinion, I love group setting. Um, to give you a little, my background, I used to do, I don't coach anymore, but I used to do a lot of coaching. And one of the biggest thing, there's so much conditioning, a fear of judgment of other people. Like it's this heavy indoctrinated thing to make people not be authentic and what i love so much uh so much because we take 12 people at a time at our retreats we only take 12 at a time what i love is there is this beautiful thing that happens when you're in a retreat setting i've never done just one night i usually do we usually at least have a minimum four um total two nights of ayahuasca then integration and workshops and sound healing and yoga it's like a whole thing and like a chef making foods but what's so beautiful is by the end, it's like a family, like everyone's broken down their barriers. Everyone went through deep stuff together with each other. And like people are like, they've never felt that level of non-judgment and love and connection. So I just think that I've seen sometimes I've seen that connection with other people in truly for the first time in their lives, being in a setting where there's no judgment ends up being the biggest healing factor for them because they've lived with yeah. judgment for 30 years or 40 years or 50 years. So uh, I would, I, I've had a lot of people ask for privates with my, with me. Um, it hasn't yet aligned for me to do privates. Uh, th there's so much beauty in the group setting that I see every time. I don't want to take that away. Um, but I'm not saying I won't ever, you know, we're, we're putting together 2024 and Megan and I are really talking. I might start offering some privates, but there's just so much beauty in the groups. There's so much beauty in them coming together and seeing the connections made. And whether they keep working with us or not, they have a little family now. And like, I see them talking for years, like it's just so beautiful. So I'm very biased, you know, just my opinion. I think there's, <laughs> I think there's huge benefits to both, but in my personal opinion, I, I love the groups. Mm, thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, I feel like it's just a different energy in a way that you're in. And so maybe also depending on your intention and uh, on yeah. where you're at with your life and also like on your openness, because for me, I feel like if it was at least the first crazy experience, uh, if it was like more private, I could go crazy. And then maybe in the groups, I would also feel like more comfortable within myself to hold myself in it. Um, so that's just how I personally feel, but it might be different for everyone. And you you know, I feel like everyone has, everyone really gets what they need um, in this or other way, which is, which is beautiful. And so speaking of all of the things that you're up, about to do, I would love you to share more about what your uh, upcoming programs are or upcoming retreats and also more about where, where people can find more information about you and generally what you do if they want to explore more of you. Yeah, yeah. So we have some cool projects. Uh, we bought land with our teachers in Colombia. We bought about 20 acres out in Colombia. So we're building an off-grid retreat center right now in Colombia. We're taking people out there in September. We're doing a retreat and we built these beautiful malocas on this mountain. It's amazing. Um, so we're working on that. We're going to be, we do a retreat every single month, either in Texas or in Colombia or Belize or Nicaragua. We do them a little bit of all over. Next year, we're doing one in Costa Rica. Uh, so, but we do 80% of them are in Texas. Um, but some big projects we have coming up, we just launched an exotic animal sanctuary. So we actually rescue and save animals. We have 23 acres on our property in Texas where we host retreats, but it's so cool. Now, uh, we just launched this a few months ago. We have like donkeys and horses and like goats and all these little rescues 
that are now all around the property. And it's such a cool experience for people coming out of ceremony to have these like loving animals around too. So we're going to keep growing the animal rescue uh, while we keep doing these retreats and continuing to build an off-grid retreat center in Columbia with our teachers. Um, and yeah, anyone that feels called to the medicine, we for some reason, we attract newbies. That's another factor with the group stuff. I would say 95% of the people we attract, it's their first time. Like uh, for some reason, it just is. We attract the new, newer people. So anyone that is called to this medicine, more than happy to talk to you. It's such a personal, sacred decision. Uh, one thing I always advise, if there's anybody in the plant medicine space pressuring you to do something, go the other way. It's such a, uh, like a personal, sacred decision. So if you feel that calling in your heart, more than happy to have a conversation. We have it in New Braunfels, Texas is our retreat center. It's like 20 minutes north of San Antonio, an hour south of uh, Austin. Um, and we're going to be doing a bunch next year, every single month also, and uh, just building the the retreat center. That's uh, in, in Columbia and the animal sanctuary. And that's it. Oh, and for our tags, we have a pretty substantial following on TikTok. Um, so a TikTok is at Magical Heels. Instagram is also at Magical Heels. And then we have a podcast too, Magical Healing the World podcast. So yeah, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. This is awesome. I really, really loved uh, connecting with you. Thank you so much. I loved it as well. And this topic is just so broad that I feel like we could talk even oh. longer, but our time is limited today. But thank you so much. Maybe we could uh, catch up in the future again and have another podcast and explore the other experiences that you will have. And uh, yeah, it's so beautiful, all the projects that you're running. So thank you so much for doing so much goodness in the world. I really can feel your heart and your kindness. So thanks a lot for sharing yourself with us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm.